Amen. It is great to be together this morning. I am so excited. Thank you, Chris, for the song service this morning as we praise and worship our Father. It's always a blessing as we uh, come together and, and share in this time. If you have your Bibles, be opening them up to Romans chapter 8, where we're going to be this morning. It's good to have so many that would have been gone and and uh, who have been ill and away from us and having people back, it's always good to see you. Uh, I know that uh, I was told this. I'm not saying this is for sure true, but I heard that as, as Carlton and his family were coming through Arkansas, he thought he saw a bluebell truck. Don't know for sure. Missed you, brother. <laughs> oh, it's good to be together. More than conquerors. You know, we, we, th we think about that, you know. How many of us like to be winners? No, all of us like to be winners. Nobody likes to lose. The only, you know, the only thing about, you know, there's only one game I've ever heard of that you want to lose, and I didn't like that one. You know, I just, I don't like losing. I, I'm just not a loser. I like to compete to win. You know, and that's, that's one of the things we do whenever we live in a, in a, in a, in a society that is as, as committed to competition as we do. I, I know that whenever I was growing up that that was one thing that I learned very early in life is that life is a competition. I'll never forget my dad telling me all the time that I was growing up, there is nothing if you set your mind to do that you cannot do. I believed that. I believed that all of my life. In fact, I think it's probably in my younger years the one thing that my dad said to me that made more sense than anything. But there are some benefits that come from competition. And there's benefits in a lot of things. I mean, we take a look at it, we understand what's going on. We all should know that as Christians we have those certain benefits. And John chapter 3, verses 16 through 18, it says, For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already because they have not believed in the name of God's one and only Son. We know. Beyond a shadow of a doubt, I hope that we know, and if you're a part of this worship assembly this morning, I hope that you know that, that we believe as, as Christian people that God loves us. And in loving us, shared with us the most precious gift that we could ever expect. And that gift was an offer to look at benefits of living for him that can only come through him. Let's pray. Father, this morning as we look at the idea of being your children and to realize how wonderful that is, how blessed we are to be a part of such a, a great and awesome family. Not just here at West Freeway, but worldwide, Father, and generations long. Thank you. Thank you for allowing us to be a part of that, to share that, to be a, an, an open invitation as we look into the eyes of people to join that family. Thank you so much for all that you do for us. Thank you for allowing us to be here today to be a part of this praise and worship time that we've shared together. And now as we listen to a portion of your word, Father, I just pray that you will open our minds to the benefits that we have in being your children. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now I want you to stop and think just a moment. What are the benefits of being a child of God. What are the benefits in your life of being a child of God? I am a child of God. I want you to know that there is something here that, 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 that I, as I, I found this, this uh, 
back, background, I noticed that all of these different statements are all the same. I am a child of God in different languages. There's not a, there's not a society or a language on earth that you cannot say, I am a child of God and miss it. Oh, there's some that want to. They want to keep God out of their, their, their language. They want to keep God out of their society. They want to keep God out of everything. But, but in, in, in the whole realm of it, you cannot take that out of language. You can speak it in any language. I am a child of God. Isn't that wonderful? Isn't it great to know? I don't have to worry. I am a child of God. Some time ago, I heard a sermon where the preacher spoke on heavenly insurance. And what he did is he, he talked about each member of the church as an insurance salesman. And just like we have people who sell automobile insurance and life insurance and, and different things, we as Christians are offering up heavenly insurance. I had an insurance salesman tell me one time, he said, I'd like to talk to you about getting you some life insurance. I said, I'd like to talk to you about getting some heavenly insurance. He didn't come back. He expected me to listen to him about life insurance, about insuring my life here on this earth, but the one thing he failed to do was to realize that there's something even more important than this earth. I wanna be in heaven. That's one of the benefits of being a Christian is that I have that hope within me that God has promised me that if I will follow him, I will be able to know without a doubt that I'm going to be with him forever. And I hope that you have that assurance as well. Because whenever I look at it, I understand. And in doing that, we need to highlight the benefits to people about what does it mean to be a Christian? What benefits are there? What, what, what am I insured for? And someone asks, well, Psalms 116, 12 says, what shall I return to the Lord for all the goodness that he gives to me? We need to realize all that God has done for us, that we have that hope of eternal life. We have to remember what God has done. And the passage in Romans that we, that we last read just a few moments ago points out that God did something for us to ensure our opportunity and hope for heaven. But do we really know the benefits that come with that? I mean, if we really thought about it, if we look at talking to our neighbors or people who don't know Jesus, and if we look at that as sharing benefits with them like we would if we were selling them insurance, maybe just maybe they would understand why it's important. I was, uh, I was shocked one time whenever I, I, I ta started talking about that and realized what was actually going on with some folks because I want you to know something. There's something that people want to know. People want to know what's in it for me. I mean, everybody's that way. What am I gonna get out of this? What's in it for me? What is it about that? Now, I hope some of you are, are, are looking at the passage. I know a lot of times we're, we're looking at Facebook or we're, we're, you know, we're texting somebody, and if you're texting them or Facebook them, I hope you're telling them what we're talking about because I want you to know something. You can, you can do a lot of good with those avenues of reaching out as a benefit, being able to share God's word with people. So if we're to know the benefits of being a child of God, and a, and a child of the king, people are going to want to know what's in it for me. Tell them what's in it for you. Text them. Facebook them. Tell them, hey, look, do you know what the benefits are of being a child of God? The benefits of having the spirit living within us? So let's take a look. You might want to write these down or, or text them or, or take notes and then be able to send it out as a, as a group message, however you want to do it. I don't care. But Listen to this because I think it's really good. Benefit one, number one is, is that we have a God who loves us. We have the benefit of God's great love. He created all of this world. 
He put the stars in the sky. He made the sun. He made the moon. He made Texas hot. He made Alaska cold. He made water wet. He made the desert dry. And he did it for me. He did it for us. The benefits of his great love. We have the opportunity to know that creator, that God. And his love will be there no matter what. It will not matter. We need to understand that. In John 15 and verse 13, greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. Boy, do we need to realize how important that verse is. Greater love. Do we have that kind of love? Greater love has no one than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. No matter how bad we mess up, God's going to love us. God will still forgive us because we're his children when we repent. Nothing can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. We, however, can reject that love. But he says, I will never take it away from you. I'll never stop loving you. God's great love. Benefit number two, God's grace. In Titus 2 and verse 11, for the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to just a few people. Wait a minute, I don't think that's what it says, does it? Oh, wait, I misread that, I'm sorry. For the grace of God has appeared that offers salvation to all people. Can you say that with me? All people. One more time. All people. Who does that not include? <laughs> I mean, all is a pretty big word. And it's great that God has offered his grace to all people. Why? So that they all can be saved. And we have that assurance that God was wanting to. I'm talking about God's grace. Remember the acronym, if you've been in my classes, you remember that, you know, grace, G-R-A-C-E, God's riches at Christ's expense. What a great thought. I mean, can you imagine? It is grace that brings that salvation. It's by grace Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9, that we are saved, not by being on the church roll, not by being here on Sunday, not just by partaking of the, the Lord's Supper, not by just saying that we're Christian. It's by being a part of the family of God, of being his child, being in his grace. God's grace is sufficient to save even the worst of us as well as the least of the sinners in this world. His grace is sufficient. And it's a beautiful gift that he offers to us. I like commercials sometimes. They, I think they tell the benefits of, of their products. Sometimes I think those are overrated. I think some, you know, you know, some of those commercials are not quite what they, they seem to be. And then they say, if you act now, you'll include this at no extra charge. It's a free gift. Wait a minute. What it tells me is, is that your product that is $19.95 is not worth $19.95. We're going to throw this other stuff in there to bring up the price to where it's at least $9.95, and we're going to make 10 bucks off of you. It's true, isn't it? You feel the same way. You look at some of those products, and you scratch your head and say, how in the world can you get that for $19.99? I remember telling you all, and, and, I, and I want to bring it up again, Tony, our, our, our middle son, was the world's worst about staying up all night watching infomercials and us getting up the next morning and him telling us, you got to get this. You should see what this thing does. Mom, you can get so much more accomplished. Lisa said, I don't put on roofing. Just kidding. But I mean, think about it. There's always these great opportunities. In a way, God does the same thing. But the product that he offers is salvation, and it holds up to its end of the bargain. And it's worth a whole lot more than you can ever pay for it. Benefit number three. God's mercy, not condemnation. Isn't that great? 
Oh, this is one of my favorites. One of the benefits of being a Christian is, is that we get the mercy of God and not his condemnation. Because see, we're not condemned if we brought into the family of God. We're no longer a part of that con condemned group of people who are going to lose their soul. We're a part of something even greater than that. We receive his mercy. He forgives us. Even when we make those dumb, senseless mistakes, he's going to forgive. He promised us to do that. Just like we forgive our children, he's going to forgive us. I'm sorry if that disappoints some of us. I don't think it disappoints very many, but think about it. God's mercy is a benefit we receive mercy. In fact, in Titus 3, 5, it says, He saved us not because of the righteous things that we have done, but because of His mercy. He saved us through the washing of rebirth and the renewal by the Holy Spirit. Now, I don't know about you, but that's pretty exciting to me. I don't have to worry any longer about being a part of what is considered to be the condemned How are we doing? Have you thought about it lately? God paid the penalty. In his infinite mercy, he chose us to live. In the battle of life and death, he holds the up or the down. And to his children, it's up. That, my friends, is mercy. Even when the world has us down, even when the world has us under the sword, and we're about to die in the, in the Colosseum of spiritual warfare, God spares us by allowing us to know that he is our father, and we as his children, are to be given mercy. Mercy, not condemnation. The fourth benefit is the Holy Spirit. In Acts 2, 38, Peter replied, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the forgiveness of your sins and you will receive what? <laughs> the gift. I love gifts. But what gift is it? The gift of the Holy Spirit. The promise is for you and your children, and for all whom the Lord our God will call. All of everybody else. That word all is once again a huge word. It's available for us all. When we surrender our lives to God and become obedient to the precepts of the gospel, we immediately receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is that holy seal of promise. In Ephesians 1, verses 13 and 14, and you also were included in Christ when you heard the message of truth, the gospel of your salvation. When you believed, you were marked in him with the seal, the promised Holy Spirit, who is a deposit guaranteeing our inheritance until the redemption of those who are God's possession to the praise of his glory. The Holy Spirit is another benefit of being a child of God. The next one, number five, forgiveness, not penalty. It actually stems from benefit number four. And I, you, you, I know you're probably thinking the same thing I did. You know, what's the difference here? But let me, let me share this because I, if we repent and we're immersed in water for the purpose of being forgiven of our sins and to receive the gift of the Holy Spirit, who is it that forgives us? It's God. God does. He says, if you do this for the forgiveness of your sins, you're done. It's, a, it's an act of, of, of submission, an act of love. It's, a, it's an opportunity for us to begin receiving the benefits of being a child of God. It is only God who can save us. It's not the church. It's not ourselves. It's God. He gives us the ability to forgive 
in ourselves once we become children of God because at that point we realize that no longer is God carrying a grudge about our past sins. We should not carry a grudge about the sins of those who have sinned against us. And we have the benefit of knowing our past is forgiven and forgotten. The ability to do the same thing that God has always done. Forgive and put behind us. Benefit number six, our needs are met. Now, there's going to be some, some thought here. Some of you are going through some very difficult times in your, in your, in your financial situation in your lives, and, and, and you're going to see that you're going to think, hey, man, my needs aren't being met. Let me, let me say something. Needs are not wants. Just because I want something or feel like I need something doesn't make it so. Because, see, God looks at his children and says, I see your needs and I will take care of them. I don't need a car. You know how I know? John and Diane have survived a long time without one. And I've seen them walk all over the west side of Fort Worth. Don't need a car. Some of us have helped them go and come and do things, but I want to tell you something. None of us need anything that we don't have. Not if we're children of God. Because God made a promise. I will take care of your needs. may not be what we want. I didn't want to sit four hours under a shade tree down at Jack Wilson's place down in Whiskey Flats last week, but I did. Until, I mean, I sat there long enough and my wife tried to help me fix my car. My car was broke. I had to put on a fan belt. Didn't have all the tools. Couldn't get the tools ready. Didn't know what I was going to do. Waiting on friends to come to help me. Richard was on his way and Chris called and said, I'm on my way. I said, come on. And we, boy, we worked on that thing and finally, you know, the last thing we did was get that fan belt fixed. Of course, it's always the last thing, you know, but it's, it was that le- last little extra effort. I didn't need Chris to come down to be able to get that done, but sure made it a lot easier. I didn't need friends to pat me on the back or send me messages on Facebook saying, man, if I'd have known, I'd have come and got you. God doesn't give us always what we want, but he makes sure that we have what we need. Think about it. Philippians 4.19, and my God will meet all, that's a big word, and my God will meet all your needs according to the riches of his glory in Christ Jesus. Benefit number seven, we have eternal life, and in the end, we win. And I would say all but maybe one of my Bibles at the very end of Revelation there is a statement that I meant to take a picture of, but, and I know you can't see it, but I want you to look. I have two words in an exclamation mark. Tom, do you see that from there? You know what that says? Chris, what does it say? We win. We win. I had a Bible one time that had the end on the, on the last page, right under it in Revelation. I said, yeah, scratch it out. I said, no, it's not the end, it's the beginning. We win. The eternal life, whenever we get and receive eternal life, we win. And God made that promise as a benefit to his children. And we need to accept that. We're going to win. I mean, there's certain indisputable facts. We're going to be, if we're born, we're going to die. And if you live in the United States, you're going to live and you're going to pay taxes and you're going to die. And if you live in Texas, you're going to be born, you're going to live in the greatest state, you're going to pay taxes, you're going to die. If you live in Oklahoma, yeah. Just kidding. There are indisputable facts. We're going to die. And we're going to spend eternity somewhere. 
The benefit of being a child of God is that we know we'll spend eternity in heaven with him. These things are written. James, 1 John chapter 5. These things are written that you may know you have eternal life. God gives us the benefits, the gift of eternal life through his son, Jesus Christ. And Paul reminds us in this chapter, chapter 8, verses 35 through 39, that we as children of God are more than conquerors. In Christ, we're winners. We receive the benefits of God's great blessings of love. We're winners, not whiners, conquerors, not defeated. So now that we know some of those benefits, those seven, I hope that you'll send them to your friends on Facebook and text or tweet or whatever you do or just visit with them because there are some benefits of being God's child and I hope that you will take advantage of those. But how easy would it be for us to sell it to everyone we meet if we too believed that those benefits were ours? I don't know where you are this morning spiritually, but I do know this. God has made us more than conquerors. God has made us, as his children, the receivers of the blessings of eternity in heaven. The question is, is will you be there? Are you ready to be there? Have you done whatever it takes to make sure that you know without a doubt that you're going to go to heaven? Many of us have made plans throughout the years into the future. And God said, that, you know, that's fine. But don't count on them. You count on me. Let's put ourselves in the place where God wants us to be. And that's under his care. This morning, if you're not a child of God, or if you need to repent, or if you need to, to, to ask for prayer for strength, I don't know what your needs are. You do, and God does. But if you have them this morning, we're going to, we're, we're going to get Chris to, to lead a song, a song that we call a song of encouragement, of invitation for you to change your life or give your life back to God or, or to start your life new as a child of God. Or maybe it's just to restart. Maybe it's just to ask for forgiveness. I don't know what your needs are. But if you have a need this morning and you need to express it, do so now while we stand.